welcome back to Tools for Sparks, where today we are reviewing the Mega EV adapter. I recently did a unboxing slash review of the Mega 1741 Plus, and in line with that, we use this to do our EV tests. So I'm just going to share with you what's in the pack and uh, tell you how it works and all my thoughts. As always, if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to hit a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, because we do post regular videos all about the crazy, amazing tools that electricians have at their disposal. So this is designed for testing electric vehicle charging points. And as an installer of EV charging points, it's absolutely essential that you do all the various functional and safety tests in order to make sure that that charging point that you've installed for your customer is safe and works correctly. And in order to do that, you need to buy an expensive piece of kit like this, unfortunately. It just, it is what it is. You can't do all the tests that you're supposed to do without having a proper EVSE tester. So this is the plug that it comes with. Now it comes with two plugs. One of them you're gonna use a lot and the other one you'll probably very rarely use. So this is a type two plug. This is a type one plug. Now type one are almost non-existent now. They were used back in the day for some of the early electric vehicles and they're still used for some like Mitsubishi, uh, fair P -Hevs, you know, um, hybrid kind of vehicles, but I think Mitsubishi are the only ones who still use them, and I'm hoping that those will be phased out fairly soon. The Type 2, pretty much every electric vehicle that is manufactured now has a Type 2 connector. So if you're installing an EV charger, you're probably going to be installing a Type 2 either untethered unit, which has a socket in the front, which you'll plug this into, or a tethered unit where it comes with a, a tethered cable and plug and then you would plug this into the end of that tethered cable and it works in exactly the same way. Comes with these nice rubber covers just to protect the plug and then what you can do is choose which one of these you need and just connect it in the end here. You just line up the pins like that and then screw that on. in order to attach the correct plug. Other things, you've got CP signal output and an earth connection there. And then in the front of here, you've got normal test lead connections. You've got a PE pretest. You've got buttons for the CP error and PE error. And then you've got your PP state and your CP state. So your PP state you should set to the amperage rating of the charging point. So if it's a 7 kilowatt charger, you would set it to the 32 amp uh, rating. So the CP error is a communication protocol. That's what CP stands for, communication protocol error. And that's basically to do with these two little pins here that do the communication with the vehicle. So if you press that button, it simulates a communication protocol error and you can just see what the charging point does if it reacts accordingly. Um, you've got a PE um, error there which simulates a lack of protective earth. So if the earth drops out, what does it do to the charging point? So that's really interesting to see um, that as well and make sure that the charging point does what it's supposed to do in the event of uh, earth loss. Uh, and then you can do this PE pretest as well. The CP state basically um, control pilot uh, A is electric vehicle not connected, so that's just you've got it plugged in, uh, but it's as if there's nothing plugged into the charger. B is electric vehicle connected, not ready to charge. So in other words, it, it can tell there's a vehicle connected, but it's not ready to charge yet. C is electric vehicle connected, ready to charge, ventilation not required uh, on that side. And so, event, so essentially when you put it on C, it will, the contactor in the charge point or whatever it has will kick in and it will start putting power to this. So that's when you can connect your tester 
So for example, if I've got my mega tester here, I can test I can plug in my tester to there. Or if I prefer, I can plug my test leads in here like this. And then I'll have voltage here at my tester and I can do the various tests that I need to do, such as earth loop impedance, RCD test, check the voltage and all that stuff. Then on the other side, you've got exactly the same. So A is uh, no vehicle present, B is vehicle present but not ready to charge. D is electric vehicle connected, ready to charge, ventilation required. So that's just sending a slightly different signal to say that it does need ventilation. Um, and that's it really. That, those are the basic tests that you have to run through when you test an electric vehicle charging point. And it's as if that this is like a vehicle essentially. So this is the brain that talks to the electric vehicle and uh, talks to the electric vehicle charging point and tells it what state the vehicle is in and whether it should start charging or not. It's really important that you do these tests and the relevant RCD tests and things with your multifunction tester. In this case, my MFT 1741 Plus goes perfectly with this. I can plug my test leads in here and then what I would do is set it to C so that it thinks there, there's a vehicle in and charging. That will then liven this plug up and I'll have power coming through to my tester. And then I can do, for example, an auto RCD test, 30 milliamp. Set my RCD to type A, which it is. That will test the internal type A RCD of the charging point, which most charging points have a type A RCD built into them now. And then you can also put it on EV, and that will test the internal 6 milliamp DC protection within the charging point, which is really important to check as well, because that is required by the regs, but you need to check to make sure that the charge point is actually giving that protection that it's supposed to give. So really good bit of kit this. I like the build of this Mega One. I have used other brands before, such as the first one that I ever had, which was the Rolex one, it was huge and it was very badly built. Since then we've been using the Matrell one as well, which is also very good. But if you've got a Mega Tester, it's kind of a no-brainer to go with the Mega EVSE adapter as well to match. And it does have extra features that some of the other ones don't, which I do quite like. It's good to have these as well as the plug. It's good to have these as well if you need them. I think you can connect an oscilloscope to it or something, whatever an oscilloscope is. I'm not quite sure. But let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Which EVSE tester do you use? Have you used the Mega one? Do you think it's good? Is there anything that you don't like about it? All your comments are much appreciated as always. And if you do enjoy these videos, don't forget to hit a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's free. And if you hit the notification bell, you get regular video updates from us. And if you'd like to find out more about these products, as always, we'll leave links in the description, along with links to other deals that we've got on for tool manufacturers at the moment where you can get discounts and stuff like that. Hopefully that'll be of benefit to you. But either way, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.